Well, I know some of you like to know what's going on, what I'm doing on the boat, some of the DIY I'm doing. Well, this morning I've just finished editing next Saturday's video, which will be for whatever it is today, the 20th, I think it is. Something like that, anyway. Maybe the 19th or the 20th, something like that. Next weekend, anyway. I've just been over to Morrison's Daily here and picked up an Amazon parcel. And in that Amazon parcel, I have a tap and die set, another tunnel light, and some wire to connect it up with. Now what I've gone and done here is I've purchased a, another lamp for the front. The one I got, they actually sent the wrong one. And I did get a really good discount for it. But this one is a spot light. And the one I originally ordered should have been a combination of this and a floodlight. But they only sent one which was a floodlight. So I've now ordered the spotlight one and I'm going to put a spotlight in as well. The floodlight one absolutely illuminates the tunnel brilliantly just after the boat and around the walls but it doesn't give me the depth into the tunnels and some of these deep long tunnels i'd like to see a little bit further up the tunnel hence i'm going to add this but it means i've got to drill a hole in the front of the boat to connect it now instead of removing all the paneling off the back of that front wall on the bulkhead wall and it's inside the cupboard as well i decided to when I go to fix the bracket up, I will tap the front wall, the front bulkhead, and screw the bolt into it. So the bolt will screw into the bulkhead rather than having to put a nut on the back. Let's hope I did it all right. And I got some more cable. It looks a little light, but it's what came recommended with it, so I guess it's correct. And actually, the cable diameter there, I can actually see. Is almost the same so yeah and i only need about a meter run anyway so it's not if it's going to be running the long way so the cable should be absolutely fine so next thing is to fit it well the first thing i've noticed when i've taken it out of the box now the last one i got had one bolt going right through here to attach the bracket on with this one has got two little short bolts and nuts to attach the bracket on with no big deal. And also, this one's got a sliding area in the bracket where the bolt goes in, so you can adjust that a little bit. The other one didn't have that. If you remember rightly, I had to drill another hole. Well, a quick way of just checking what size thread it is, because obviously there is a gauge here. But I've just picked up die here, and not the tap. So I'm going to obviously tap the hole and the bolt it just threads nicely into that die so that is the obviously the correct size now i've got to get the correct tap to match that now i need my glasses to read what the size is well it's got a 1.25 mil pitch and it's an m8 i don't know if the camera's quite picking that up so there's the tap i need so i'm just checking the gauge here and it's that one there so the gauge there is telling me it's a 1.25 pitch. It's 1.25 millimetres. That fits that perfectly. Which is this tap. If I line that tap up, you see that goes in there perfectly as well. Because that's a 1.25 mil pitch gauge. Well now I've got to make up my mind where I want to put it. My original idea was to put it over this side because I have one that side. But I have the horn in the way here. It will fit in there just above the horn. There's the cables. I think I can probably run the horn cables through these screws on the back of this light. Yeah, I'm gonna fit it in about there. And I've got a light both sides. I think that's the way to go for this. You probably can't see that because I'm using a black marker pen, but I'm gonna be drilling the hole there. It was pointless me trying to film marking it up because I couldn't get out of the way. So that's where the hole's gonna go. So I've got my drill out ready. I'm gonna start off, this is a five mil drill I've put in here. I'm 
might have been better to put a smaller drill through first. I was worried about snapping it. Actually, I don't think this drill's very good. I'm gonna just go and get a different drill bit. I've got some brand new drills here, so that one I've had for a long time. Well, that was much better, wasn't it? There's a piece of wood behind that, but that doesn't matter. There's a cupboard behind here, or a closet behind here. That makes it a lot easier with a decent drill. So a seven and a half mil drill bit. I keep saying a seven and a half mil drill bit. I actually use a seven mil drill bit. I do have a seven and a half mil drill bit in case I need it in case I can't tap through it at seven mil. So there we go, a seven and a half mil drill hole there. I think that should be about right now to put an eight mil tap in. Here's the tap. I've got it at the moment just on a short bar. I do have the uh, double handled bar here if I need it to actually get it in there. Right, that goes in there, okay. I'm just gonna go and get some paint. Just put a lodge of paint over there. Well, I do have some uh, Hammerite black paints, which this is painted in, in the back. But it's a brand new tin, I don't wanna open it. So I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of spray paint on it. And then on the bolts, this is uh, water resistant uh, stern tube grease. I'm also gonna put a little bit of that on the bolts when I put it in. So that should give a waterproof seal anyway. Well, perhaps putting it up behind the horn wasn't such a good idea. It's extremely fiddly trying to get the bolts in. My hands are just too big. Right, I've picked it up. I'm going to get a spanner and tighten it up. Right, got a spanner. I think it's 14 mil it should be. Of course, for my American friends, we would be calling this a wrench. Right, that's up there now. Uh, that's right. Lava trying to get that bolt done up. Anyway, it's there. Um, I took it off actually after putting it up the first time and put a couple of washers uh, behind the bolt head because it was trying to encapsulate into a groove which obviously was supposed to hold there for putting a nut on the other from the other way which was obviously no good for me because I was uh, tapping it into the framework that's all nice and solid now now what I do is connect it up so what I've got to do is disconnect the connectors this end. This has got heat shrink over it. Oh, it's more heat shrink, so that's not a problem. But I did use spade connectors, so I'm not going to lose. That's what comes through the wall, so it's very short. So I did it with spade connectors on purpose. So when I cut these off now, if I ever wanted to rewire it, this was, I can put two cables into each spade and reconnect it. But I don't have to mess around with these spades, cutting these off and trying to reconnect new connectors on there. So all I want to do now is cut off this heat shrink and put new terminals on. I've just removed one piece of heat shrink. I'm just about to remove the other piece. Right, put the new 
new cable here just to strip it. I'm going to have to cut these terminals off. Could have used piggyback ones, but I don't like those, so I'm going to put the two connectors in together. Just them off. I'll do one at a time. I'm going to step up to a yellow connector just to make sure both cables fit in okay. Solid. Since I did this last time and put the yellow on, which was the only size I had, Lidl the other day was selling the, this kit's a heat, heat shrink. Perfect. Just grabbing the one the right size now. Black's a little bit on the large side, but it's black. And it won't show up so much, will it? I hope it'll shrink down enough. Yep, that'll work quite nicely. That's on there. Let's do the other one. I'm just gonna judge how much wire I need. I cut it a little bit too long for now. to connect it up this end now I'm keeping the wire too long because I can tuck it up behind the lights and I haven't got any fixings yet to fix it up onto the roof with so until I get those I can just tuck it up around the lights and I'm not quite sure on the profile and how much I exactly need so I'm going to leave it too long I can always trim it back later if need be or I can just hide it behind the lights so there's always extra to play around with if you need it This side, I'm just going to use a couple of insulated uh, connectors. I will put some shrink wrap over the top again, though. Or shrink cube. This time, I'm going to use some of that bigger black shrink cube because I'm going to put over the whole lot. We're both in there. Together. Well, that was the install of my spotlight, a second lamp on the front, rather than just having the floodlight, which I'm hoping is going to move more depth into the tunnel. Well, here we are. At Harecastle Tunnel. Time to try it out. Let's see how good it is. That is going to obviously bring us to the end of this video with a little section here of trying the lamp out. Well, whether it works or not, I've got to go through the tunnel. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, meanwhile, of course, a big thank you goes out to all my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters and everybody for watching the channel. Well, that just leaves me to say, thank you very much for watching, Trevor Out. Well, I must say, it looks like it makes quite a big improvement to me, and it's me that has to worry about it. The only problem is, shortly after this, the 
boat that follows me in is very smoky and with the fans on at the other end it draws all the fumes down the tunnel in the direction I'm heading to escape through the fans at the bottom end but all this smoke is dragged past my boat so guess what it's like driving through thick fog <laughs> 